Let's go through an example of using a change of variables to compute a double integral. All right, the, the double integral that we want to calculate is the integral over the region d of the function y dA. So the region d is in the xy plane here. Um, it's, it's bounded below by y equals 0, and then it's bounded by these two portions of parabolas, y squared equals 4 minus 4x and y squared equals 4x plus 4. So the change of variables that we're going to use is this map t, which in coordinates we have t of uv equals u squared minus v squared and 2uv. So this means that x is equal to u squared minus v squared and y is 2 times u times v. And the claim here is that the unit square here bounded by u equals 1 and v equals 1, which I'm calling r, is mapped onto the region D by the change of variables T. So let's let's verify this. So what we'll do is we'll analyze each of the boundary curves. So for instance, this is the curve V equals 0. And then we see that U runs from 0 to 1. So it's just my notation for that. And now we want to understand what part of the boundary of D uh, the change of variables maps this curve onto. And so we just look at the coordinate transformations and we see that if v equals 0, x equals u squared and y equals 2 times u times 0. So y equals 0. So we're on the line y equals 0 and since as x equals u squared, u is this parameter that runs from 0 to 1, so we, we run from 0, 0 to 1, 0. So what we find is that as we travel along this boundary, t maps that boundary exactly onto this boundary from the origin out to this point one zero. Okay, and so now we can continue on like this, and so the next part of the boundary is the curve u equals one. So if, if u equals one, then v is running from zero to one then we have that x equals 1 minus v squared and y equals 2v. So we want the relation between x and y given this, this parametric equation. And if I consider y squared, I get 4v squared, which now is on the same order as x. And so I see that this equals 4 minus 4x. Okay, and so that's why this is the, the curve that the boundary u equals 1 maps to. So now I'm indicating it with these arrows, which really also means since v is going from 0 to 1 as I travel up along this boundary, it means I'm mapping from this point to this point as I travel along in the same direction. So we're really indicating an orientation here, which gives us an orientation here of the boundary. All right, the next curve is v equals 1. So if, if v equals 1, then if, if we travel from right to left, we actually have u goes from 1 to 0. And in any event, x equals u squared minus 1 and y equals 2u. So a similar situation, uh, but now if we square y, we get 4u squared and that's actually equal to 4x plus 4 just because this is 1 minus v squared and this is u squared minus 1 sort of off by um, a negative sign here. So what we said is that this curve v equals 1 gets mapped to this boundary curve from here back down the line y equals 0. All right and finally we have u equals 0 here and v goes from 1 to 0. And if u equals 0, then x equals minus v squared and y equals 0. So we're back on the curve y equals 0, and now v starts at 1, which means x equals negative 1, so we're at this point, and then v ends up at 0, which means x is 0, and we end up at this point. So we see that as we close off 
this boundary here. We close out this boundary here and end up back where we started at the origin. Okay, and so then all the interior points map to the interior points here. And for instance, if we look at this curve v equals u, well, if v equals u, then x equals 0. And so this actually maps to the y-axis along here. So this isn't strictly necessary if, if you were to sort of take my word that t maps r onto d and is 1 to 1, then you could just use this, this change of variables and, and we could do the work with the integration. But I just wanted to go through this discussion of, of offering some perspective on, on why this change of variables maps this region r onto the region d. So to apply the change of variables, we need to know that t of r equals d. We also need t to be 1 to 1, which I haven't justified, but is uh, a fairly straightforward verification. And we need t to be a C1 transformation, which just means that I can take first partials of both x and y and, and get continuous functions. But both the coordinate functions x and y are polynomial in u and v, so I can, in fact, take as many derivatives as I need to. All right, so now we want to rewrite this integral um, in terms of u and v coordinates. So what we've done here is, is demonstrate that the bounds for u and v are, are both 0 to 1. Okay, so then we'll have to figure out what function we need to integrate, and so we'll do this integral dv du. Now there's a couple things we need to figure out here. One is how does this integrate, I'm sorry, how does this integrand y translate over to uv coordinates? Well, it's we actually have it. It's y equals 2 times uv. So this is 2 uv. And then the other thing we need is the Jacobian. Now we calculate really the absolute value of the Jacobian. So the Jacobian is the determinant of this matrix of partial derivatives of t. So for instance, the partial of x with respect to u is 2 times u, and the partial of x with respect to v is negative 2v. And then the partial of y with respect to u is 2v, and with respect to v is 2u. So I'm going to take the determinant of this matrix, and I get 4u squared, and then plus, because it's minus, and I have this minus sign, 4v squared. All right, so that says the Jacobian is 4 times u squared plus v squared. And so this is the, the new integrand that I have to, to calculate in the integral of in uv coordinates. And so now we've completely rewritten our integral in terms of our new coordinates using this change of variables t, which is the real um, heart of, of the matter in section 8 is, is learning how to rewrite these integrals so we can use any coordinate change that we'd like. All right, we still have to do the work of, of computing this, this double integral. So the integrand is 8, and then when I multiply the uv through, I get u cubed v plus uv cubed. So I'm going to have the integral 0 to 1, and I'm integrating with respect to v first. So I'm going to get 4u cubed v squared plus 2uv to the fourth. And I'm evaluating this from v equals 0 to v equals 1, and I still have my integral du. So we have the integral 0 to 1 of 4u cubed plus 2u du. All right, so again, another simple integral to calculate. So this is just u to the fourth plus u squared evaluated 0 to 1, and I get 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2. So we've computed the integral of y dA over this region D to be 2, but we did that using the change of variables T, which allowed us to calculate this integral using a different coordinate system, uv coordinates, that related to xy coordinates exactly by this change of variables T. And then the idea was that with any coordinate changes that hopefully it makes the computation a, a little bit easier or a lot easier in some cases, um, which allows us to, to get an answer that would be otherwise cumbersome or, or possibly even um, 
impossible to calculate using elementary functions without resorting to power series tricks or other things here. So, so that's the virtue of, of changing variables and, and this is a good example of, of how this works in practice.